All right, so in this video, we're going to introduce Green's theorem. Um, so Green's theorem is another manifestation of the fundamental theorem of calculus, um, but it's sort of one dimension higher than the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? So for the fundamental theorem, we're, we're always integrating over a one-dimensional object, right? Either an interval in the context of like Calc 1, the original fundamental theorem, or, or you're doing a line integral, right? Um, as, as we've seen. Uh, so in Green's theorem, what we do is we move up one dimension, right? So rather than integrating over a curve where the boundary consists of a couple of points, a couple of zero-dimensional objects, uh, we integrate over a two-dimensional object whose boundary is then a one-dimensional object, right? So whenever you take the boundary, you go down by a dimension. Um, so the, the setup here is going to be that we have, so our region D, is at least initially it's going to be it's going to be closed it's going to be bounded um, and and probably we should also ask that it's connected if it, if the region is not connected if it if it consists of more than one piece you just deal with each piece separately um, so there's there's no reason not to assume that it's connected right. Um, and um, the other thing we'll ask is that it's simply connected. So this is this condition that there are no holes in the region. Uh, we will see, however, that you can actually, we'll look at an example showing that you can drop this condition. So simply connected turns out not to be necessary, um, but it will be in the original sort of statement and proof of the theorem. Okay. So D is this closed connected, simply connected region. So we're, we're thinking about something we can integrate over, right? So D is, say, something like this. Here's D, okay? Some region where it makes sense to consider a double integral. Um, then we have C. So C, using the notation from the previous video, is the boundary of D. Um, so being the boundary of D means that C is going to be a, it's a simple closed positively oriented curve. Okay. Um, and one additional condition that we're putting on, whether you think of this as a condition on the region or whether you think of it as a condition on the curve, um, we also want it to be, we want it to be piecewise smooth. Okay? So we want it to consist of some, at worst, some finite number of smooth components that make up the curve, right? Um, we don't want to insist on smooth because we want to be able to integrate over regions like triangles and rectangles that have corners. We want to allow for corners. Um, but we don't want to get ourselves into a situation where we're considering regions with, you know, I don't know, fractal boundaries or something like this. We, we don't want to get too carried away. So this is, the, this is the context in which we have Green's theorem. Okay, so we've got kind of a standard region that we integrate over. Um, C is the boundary of that region, right? So C is the curve going around the outside. Okay. And we've got a couple of functions. We've got functions P and Q. And P and Q are going to be C1 functions. And they're going to be defined... on all of D, okay? So in particular, that means that they have to be defined along C and everywhere on the region inside of C, okay? Um, so this, this domain condition is actually quite important. Um, if, there are, if there are places in the region where these functions fail to be defined or fail to be differentiable, um, then Green's theorem is not going to hold, at least not in the form that we're gonna write it down. Um, uh, if there are points in here where these functions are, are 
where the, you know it's not either not defined or not C1, uh, well then we might be into this setting where maybe the region we're looking at is not actually simply connected and then we have to think about how to deal with that. Okay, But um, we're going to go with that for now. Okay, so we've got our P, we've got our Q. Um, here's what Green's theorem says. So Green's theorem says with all of this, with all these conditions, Green's theorem says that the integral around C, right, this integral around this closed loop of P dx plus Q dy is equal to the double integral over D of dq dx minus dp dy. Integrate with respect to area. Okay? So that's what Green's theorem states. Right? Um, so uh, the guy, Green, that this is named after, um, by the way, in case you're wondering, um, so he was an English amateur mathematician. Um, so he didn't do this for, for a living. And in fact, um, from the age of nine, uh, his par so his parents ran a bakery, and they put him to work starting at nine years old. Um, so from nine years onwards, um, he was a bakery boy. He worked in the bakery. He did, you know, did the baking for his parents. Um, whenever he wasn't baking, he went to the library and he read math books. Uh, and he learned as much as he could. He managed to prove this theorem. He wrote a little pamphlet on it um, explaining the theorem in the context, actually, of... Uh, of electricity and magnetism. Um, and apparently they made about 100 copies. Um, hardly anyone read it. And then eventually, eventually it was discovered. I think it was discovered by maybe uh, by like Lord Kelvin or something like this and, and was put to use. And eventually, so eventually, you know, he did get his credit. Um, the result was named after him. Um, he did eventually get into, I'm going to say Cambridge, Cambridge or Oxford, one of the two. Um, but they didn't let him in until he was about 40. Um, he managed to graduate, uh, and then shortly after graduating, well, uh, he died. Um, so I don't know, maybe not a happy ending for Green. Uh, let me just point out a couple of other kind of things notationally. Um, we've seen that this sort of differential form here, um, this is one way that you can write a line integral like this. The other way, of course, that you could always write this is you could always write this as f dot dr, where f is this vector pq, right? And we've seen that before. Um, we've also discussed the fact that um, what you have here is, so this is basically the z component of the curl, right? So one way to think of it is like this. It's, it's the curl of f dotted with k, right? Um, now, everything is in the plane here, right? These, these functions, they depend only on x and y. There's no z component to this vector field. Um, curl is really something we should do in 3D, but we can pretend that, that, you know, really we just have a vector field here where the z component is zero, and it just so happens that these functions only depend on x and y. You can compute the curl in that context. The x and y components of the curl are always zero in that setting. The only one that comes out to be non-zero is the z component, and it's exactly this. So you can think of this as you know, the scalar part of that curl, right? You take the curl, dot it with k, um, and you get the result. So you'll sometimes see Green's theorem written in this notation as well. Um, there is another variant on it, but I give this as an assignment problem, so maybe we won't talk about it here, uh, where um, rather than computing sort of the, so this is this flow integral, right? We're, we're calculating sort of the component of the vector field in the direction of the curve. We're, we're kind of working out, you know, how much of the vector field is flowing along the curve, right? Um, and, and because it's a closed curve, uh, one other thing to note is that what you're computing here is really a, uh, it's a circulation, right? Um, and, and we have this, uh, so, so line integrals around a closed curve are called circulation. And notice we do have this connection with curl, right? Remember we talked about curl as, as telling you something about, you know, um, rotational potential for your vector field. And you sort of see that here, right? If you have a non-zero curl, that means that there's something that's going to go around your closed curve. Um, so that's, uh, 
That's one way to think about it. Um, you could also compute flux across the curve. Instead of dotting with the unit tangent vector, you could dot with the unit normal vector, the sort of the outward pointing unit normal. And you would find that if you do that, if you, if you compute flux instead of flow over here, um, then what you get is dp dx plus dq dy. You get the divergence on this side. Um, so you can connect these ideas of, you know, so that um, this kind of flow connects with, with curl, right? This idea of circulation connects with curl, flux with divergence. Um, we'll, see, we'll see some of these connections. Um, Again, uh, in, in our last set of videos, when we talk about um, the divergence theorem and Stokes theorem, the kind of higher dimensional analogs of Green's theorem, uh, we'll see these ideas popping up again. Okay, so that's the statement of the theorem. In the next couple of videos, we're going to see some examples, and we'll, we'll try to discuss a little bit why this thing is true.